No one has the balls to stand up like I'm doing right now. Let's stop the crap already. We're all Americans. We're all equal. I don't see black. I don't see Asian. I don't see anything but American. Welcome to Bo Deedle's One Tough Podcast. Well, today we have a great, great, great guest, a guy named Dan Ives. Probably going to be one of my most interesting podcasts ever. It will let you know the difference between chips and AI and what the new revolution for every one of us in this world is going to be facing with this NVIDIA and all these tech companies, all these chip companies, AI companies. I think we're going to have one of the most interesting conversations. And uh, he was one of the guys that jumped on NVIDIA when they had a market cap of $300 million about three years ago. Now it has a market cap of $3.3 trillion. Boy, I wish I had 100000 on that. Well, let's talk about some current events we haven't been on in a while. And here, we're talking about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. I spoke to some Secret Service, former Green Beret sniper guys that were involved in this. And, you know, the overview of the whole thing, I know information has been coming out, more and more information, but uh, I'm a security person and people love to hear the conspiracy. Until you show me some conspiracy, I'm going to give you the facts that this was something that there was an inefficient amount of security people there, inefficient amount of Secret Service operatives around there, and the dependencies to the local, which they always use the local people for support. With, uh, they didn't even have communication on the radio between them and the Secret Service. If you talk about a complete screw-up from top to bottom, this was it. When this 20-year-old kid can climb on the roof and have that shot. And, and when I talked to a couple of these Secret Service retired guys, they said the environment has really changed a lot as far as taking people out. Just imagine if there was a young African-American kid climbed up on that roof and was looking over over the top of that roof and then all of a sudden one of the secret service snipers took his head off i mean it would, we wouldn't hear the end of it everyone's hesitating and again we go back to the george floyd effect police officers out there are hesitating everyone's hesitating because they're afraid of what's going to happen and we're talking about again a a obviously a very troubled young man there and i'm waiting to hear about any any type of connections with any kind of a conspiracy and wide open. And I'm glad uh, we had the uh, the congressional hearings yesterday. That was the House uh, subcommittee there yesterday. And that Secret Service director there, Chidi, Chidi, whatever her name, Chidi D, Chidi D is gone. And uh, she resigned yesterday. And it was really a remarkable thing to watch this re Representative Nancy Mace go out. She actually said to your fa her face, you're full of shit twice. <laughs> I mean, and this head of the Secret Service had no answers to any of the questions completely showed that she was so, it's just a typical Biden appointee. Uh, Biden appointed her. You have uh, uh, the fellow who's the head of Homeland Security. Our, our, our borders are well protected and sealed. Alejandre, whatever the hell his name is. Every one of the people in the cabinet are people that are the most, uh, are probably the worst people that you could have running our government. And this is just another answer to that. Also, my friend Lauren Bobbitt, she was with me at some dog, uh, we were saving dogs out in Southampton over the weekend. Very lovely lady, very smart lady. She went at her also. And uh, she, has, she now has taken full responsibility for this screw-up. But only, I know Donald Trump, 45 years only by the grace of God. A lot of people don't know when you fire a 223 round, it's a small round, but it comes in a velocity over 3,000 feet per, uh, 3, foot, foot per second. And that thing, if that hit his head, if it was another inch over, his head would have blown off and we wouldn't have Donald Trump today. Thank God that the I really believe in God on this one. And I'm not a God type guy, but God was there for Donald Trump, and I'm glad he's okay. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, this next presidential race here now, we are, now we got Biden stepping down. My big thing is on this. If he's not qualified to run again, if he's so uh, out of it, how the hell can we have him running this country for the next six months? 
This is scary to me, really scary to me for the fact that we know our own Secretary of State, oh, Blinken, another moron. Blinken came out the other day and says that Iran's going to have the nuclear bomb in one or two weeks. Wow, that's reassuring right now. And who do we have running the uh, presidency? Uh, Biden, doesn't he go to sleep from 10 to 2? What happens if there's an attack or rockets going off from Iran with a nuclear device and we can't wake up the president? Who are we going to do? We'll get the old uh, head of the uh, Secretary of Defense. Wasn't he uh, under an operation or something? We couldn't get in touch with him. And we saw how well he treated our withdrawal in Afghanistan. Another uh, uh, incompetent person. So Biden steps down. All of a sudden... Kamala Harris, again, she's a fine lady. I'm not going to knock her. She she made her way up. She was going out with my friend Montel Williams. Montel's a good friend of mine. Let me just say it at that. She, uh, I don't know, her qualifications, the only thing I saw her do, she was put in charge of the czar of our southern border. I'm laughing. I think she was 25 miles away. She visited once, and uh, she did nothing. And this is three and a half years. And that was the only job that I remember her having. And she wasn't that efficient with that job. I think when she ran for president, I think she got 1%. There's a reason why she got 1%. Now we're supposed to anoint her because Biden's going to not run again. We're going to make her the president-elect uh, uh, for the Democrats. Shame on. Shame on this country from letting something like this happen. Again, if President Biden is that irresponsible and is that out of it, why the hell is he still running this country right now? I have grandchildren, I have children, and I'm scared shit with this guy being the president if he's so out of it. Now we're going to have laughing Kamala. All I've ever seen her do is laugh at things. When you say something serious, she just laughs. She can dance pretty good. Again, this is unbelievable. And uh, uh, you know what? We got to do one thing. And I got to, if I could talk to President Donald, former President Donald Trump, don't go after her. She's a woman. She's an African American woman. Don't go after her. All you do is you go after the Biden policies that she was part of. Your inflation, the, the, the reversal against crime where the criminals now have the advantage. We just uh, had a bus driver that was stabbed. And because of these new bail reform laws, it didn't get into the grand jury fast enough. And they threw it out and the guy walked out of there. I mean, these are things that she supports. I heard something on the way out here. Part of the thing is she wants to have health care for every American, which I'm for. But then she goes a little further. For everyone who's not even a citizen's health care, education, she wants to let everybody vote. Is this where we're going with America? Hey, people work hard. And the American people should draw the line in the sand and say, what are we going to do here? Look, at I am for responsible people that want this great freedom of democracy and to live and the American dream should be there for everyone. But one little problem, we have an influx of all this criminal uh, enterprises that have entered our southern border, these Venezuelan gangs that are bent on one thing, on murder, robberies, and doing bad things to American citizens. If we don't recognize this, you or someone you know, or your family member will become a victim. And uh, we know we know all about what's going on. Every day we pick up the papers. And coming over here, I almost got hit again. I had two cars. I put two cars into the body shop because of these motorbike, motorcycles hitting each other. But one good thing, you have Sheriff Miranda's doing a pretty good job on these pot, these illegal pot places. I think he's closed down about 600 of them. That was a very good pick, Eric Adams. Sheriff Miranda's doing a great job uh, as the sheriff of New York City, closing down these illegal pot. But we got, we can't stop confiscating these illegal motorcycles, motorbikes, mopeds. If they ain't got a license plate on it, and they ain't got a license, and they ain't got insurance or a registration, we should confiscate them, get them off the streets. Quality of life equals crime and that's it we have to get back on that and you know we we see all over the place in new york city with these shootings every day we pick up the 
the, the thing in Brooklyn, two men dead and a third man hospitalized. And these were, oh, who are these people? Oh, oh, excuse me. They were from Venezuela. They were having a gang war, the two fractions of Venezuelans that came to our southern border, who came to America to have the American dream. The American dream, you want to just bring the criminality from your gangs in Venezuela into our country. We don't want them. And now we talked about the insurrection into the Capitol on January 6th. I saw another insurrection. We have a New York City cops there right now in these anti-Israeli protests. We have Netanyahu testifying now before the House, before the Congressional uh, House and Senate right now. And uh, yesterday, they stormed the Capitol. They stormed the Capitol with a demonstration. They didn't wait to ask to come inside. Why weren't they all arrested? Why weren't they arrested? Why didn't we go after them? That's my Capitol. How dare you go in there and you storm the Capitol? It's the same as January 6th. What's the difference? And you want to know something? These are uh, things that are happening right before our eyes. Again, to finalize this again, Americans, we are not stupid. We are smart people. We work hard. The American dream goes to people that work hard. And if you want the American dream to continue, when you vote, you maybe don't like him. He's a narcissist. He's got a big mouth. He's my friend. Hold your nose. You've got to vote for Donald Trump for the fact that Donald Trump is the only one that's going to help us. If you vote for Kamala Harris... It's only going to get worse. She's going to make Biden look like he was teething. She's completely in the pocket of all these progressives. All of a sudden, she raised about $100 million in one day from all these liberal progressive groups, including that scumbag George Soros with his ugly punk son. And this is all he cares about. All he cares about is supporting these district attorneys who want to let the criminals out of jail and want to do this and want to do that. And all they care about is the demise of our great country. This is not my country. This is every African-American, every Jewish person, every Catholic person, every Spanish person, every Asian person. This is our country. And we want the best for us, our children, and our grandchildren. Uh, stay tuned. Like I said, I got Dan Ives coming out and you're going to really enjoy this podcast. It will give you your direction. You want to invest some money? Stay tuned. Today, I think that I have probably the most interesting man that I've met in a long time. You know, I used to have Scaramucci on here. He's okay. He made a few dollars. But this guy, Dan Ives, that I'm going to introduce you to, I just wish I met him three years ago. He had this thing called NVIDIA or some crap like that. It was... Three years ago, they had a market cap of $300 million. Now it's $3.3 trillion. Something tells me my friend here, Dan Ives, picked that baby. But I wish I was with him three and a half years ago. I had him up in Reyes with me a couple of weeks ago. I said, you're three and a half years too friggin' late, man. So this is my friend, Dan Ives. He's the managing director and senior equity research analyst at Wedbush Securities since 2018. Boy, I wish I knew him then. Uh, two decades, he's a tech analyst on Wall Street, earliest career at HBO. What'd you do at HBO? Corporate finance. HBO. Oh, okay, because I had some involvement with them. Uh, what was that guy's name, the head guy uh, of HBO? Oh, the head, I, I mean, Bukas. No, the number one guy. Who was yeah, he? Yeah, um, Jeff Fuchs. Oh. I, and there were, there, I, when there were a few when I was there. Lombardi was the number two. Michael Lombardi, I think, oh, was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the one that put my my TV series Vinyl against Walking Dead, destroyed it. Very <laughs> bad, bad, very bad for timing. Don't hold that. that against me. Yeah, okay. And then let's do a little more, more about it. You, you have a BS, what is that, bullshit in finance at Penn State University? <laughs> BS. Uh, we are. Okay, and then you have an MBA in finance from the University of Maryland. You got more degrees than a friggin' thermometer. 16 years at FBR, Capital Markets focusing on enterprise software and hardware. Expertise includes cybersecurity. I'm into cybersecurity, too. Cloud computing, big data, all kinds of good shit. Also, you've been the keynote speaker globally on TV and, and uh, NSNBC, MSNBC, Bloomberg, and everything else, and uh, ABC, NPR, BBC. And wait a second. Best Dressed Man on Wall Street, New York Post, 2024. It's very obvious Lachlan Murdoch's running that. 
What do I look like, Lachlan? Look like Ascat Shang shirts, Stefan and Richie's ties, Bruno Maglio's shoes, everything. I mean, this is bad. I mean, I mean, that's an unbelievable outfit. Well, this, I dress like this. I, you always dress for success. That's Dan. exactly. That, that, that's why you're at Rayo's on Thursday night, and yeah. I'm just at some pizza place in New Jersey. And that's why I had dinner at Bamonte's last week with Ken Langone. Uh, what was his name? Fred Grasso. Was it a Richard Grasso, New York Stock yeah, Exchange? Yeah. How about Vinny Viola? Mm. Vinny Viola. Wait, 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 one more. And how about Frank Bezignano? Frank Busy now, who's the CEO and chairman of $80 billion company. Come on. Which one is that? The banking apps and all that? Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, I called you on the show because I think that you're very interesting. And people listen to my podcast. I got a lot of listeners. And if people listen carefully, maybe they'll pick up some really good tips as far as you being who you are. And you are quite noted to be a very good picker. And, you know, we're talking about this AI uh, revolution. And I'm going to tell you something. I actually use that chat thing. And I put together a, uh, a letter to the state uh uh, uh, to state uh, uh, the federal, no, the New York State, uh, no, what did I put it together? It was the New York State. I was trying to get a guy out of jail, mm. and I put a letter together, and he got out of jail. But it flipped around a few of the words, made me sound very smart. I believe in AI. I believe it is so far, but it's just something that I just hope that we can control AI. Sure. And I'd like to find it. Now, we're talking about in the medical field. I've been reading up on AI. Yep. And the medical field is uh, using uh, uh, that is 67% accurate with all these kind of findings and all that. And even our friend here, Elon Musk, who I'd love to have on my, on my podcast, I like I like Elon Musk. Only problem is I don't like these cars with the battery. My friend, the astronaut, uh, Greg Olson, had one at my house, and he had to plug the friggin' thing in for 12 hours. I don't have the regular AC. My problem is I I hope they perfect these batteries a little better. And, uh, and as far as uh, we're talking about using uh, AI, what's your feelings about that? I mean, well, first of all, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Look, in terms of AI, I mean, this is really a revolution. I think it's the biggest tech trend that we've seen since the start of the internet, mid-90s. And the reason AI is so important, it's not really right now for the consumer. It's on enterprises. When you look at companies like NVIDIA, Microsoft, mm. Google, Palantir, what they're essentially doing now is cracking the code on what's called 30 40% of data that's never been able to be accessed for financial institutions, healthcare, pharmaceutical governments. So the reason AI is so important in terms of this revolution mm -hmm. that we're seeing, it's essentially what I'll call as a fourth industrial revolution. That's really what's playing out right now with AI. It's that big, huh? It's that, I mean, I think it is even bigger than Star of the Internet. And the reason I talk about we've been so bullish on tech is because it starts off with Godfather of AI, Jensen Huang, and NVIDIA, Microsoft. That's just the tip. In other words, the second, third derivatives of this playing out, names like Apple. Look, Apple is essentially introducing their own AI. So consumers, one, two, three years from now, there's going to be hundreds of AI apps on an app store that go through Apple. And I think we're now just starting to see where I believe the tech and the future is going. Can we use AI to pick what the next big AI company is going to be? Well, look, I mean, there, <laughs> but to that point, there's many investors that are almost using AI because no different than black boxes and all the data that's really driven a lot of the trading, AI can be used in different forms. It could be used... On an enterprise, it could be used for radio stations to better identify their users and how do they actually take advertising. That was, that was one of them. the questions I was going to ask you. How is it being used now in people's lives every day, the AI? Today, we haven't even started. I, mean, I would view this as bottom of the first inning mm -hmm. of a wow. nine-inning game to wow. where this is going. So today, in 2024... It's just the start of how I think many consumers are going to interact. So I'll just give you an example. I think over the next, call it two, three, four years, 
a, a huge use case of AI is full self-driving. In other words, autonomous cars that essentially drive themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing that obviously Tesla focuses on, Waymo, which is owned by Google. That's probably one of the biggest forms of AI where, Bo, I think by the end of the decade, 20% of ride shares in terms of Ubers, Lyfts, yeah. there won't be a driver in there. Wow. Wow. You think the safety factor is that going to be that pronounced? Because I do pick up the paper with a car running into a pole, you know? No, look, there have been tragic yeah. incidents and no doubt it, it, it's a bumpy path to get there. But autonomous is one example. You talk about pharmaceutical drug discoveries. What, what AI, you talk about use cases, AI is really front and center in what could really accelerate so, some of so that. So to bring it down to a general, for the general population to understand, AI is a, a compound of all information being stored in there. And every aspect of that information is now, uh, is now, uh, this, uh, is focused as far as the best way. Say if we use it on a medical thing. I have cancer. I have cancer that is um, metabolized from my prostate to my bladder or whatever, and they could feed into the AI to find out the best way of combating that yep. cancer. So, so in other words, we're going to use that for for our lives. Okay, so that's that's one example in terms of like a real example is in from healthcare. Another example would be, I think a few years from now, percentage-wise, you might have one of every five, one of every ten households that actually have robotics in the house. And what I mean by that is there's essentially going to be apps, AI-driven apps, that right now you could control on your iPhone, and you'll have robot for three to $5,000 at your house right now <sighs> doing wow. the laundry, doing things that you might want, whatever you wanted to do, and these are all things that ultimately robotics are going to understand the individual and what those habits are. And that, because AI, this think about it like it's like a five-year-old. What's the difference between a five-year-old and a 17-year-old? There's more data. They're smart. Right. We're about 35 years. They've gone yeah. through more. That's essentially what AI is. It's really wow. a data-driven model. So, in other words, we all went to school with the industrial, uh, 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 when we had the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. mechanicals, this, aviation. So, you're looking at AI as a whole new, uh, a whole new world of, yes. uh, of where we're facing right now. That's that's and now right now it's being what. When it goes back to like for anyone listening, like okay, what does it mean for stocks? Like how do yeah. you? But that's also why, like, we've been so bullish names like NVIDIA, Microsoft, Palantir, Google, AMD. I'm just giving some names like in terms of software. When you look at cybersecurity, mm -hmm. think about what we just saw with CrowdStrike in yeah. terms of the attack. All of this data is going to need to be protected. That's names like Palo Alto, Zscale, and others. So that's why I believe it's a tech bull market for the next few years. But the main thing, it's this AI revolution. We believe... It's 9 p.m. in the AI party, yeah, and that goes to 4 a.m. Wow. You know, and even when we talk about the uh, CrowdStrike, I, we all hear the conspiracy. It was hacked and this, and we realized it was just a software. And I talked to my friends. I have an inv uh, investment in this company here, Hackleon. Here, this one here. Did you ever mm. hear this one? Mm. Very good company. What they do is they have to take the Art Carvello used to be the head no, of I know, RSA. Art's I know, a very I, yeah, so I know Art well. He's yeah. on the board. He's one of my oh, dear wow. friends. Wow. So this company is a sensational company. So in New York City right now we have a breach of a hacking holding ransom with this information Ransomware. for a million dollars. Yeah. This company that I'm associated with now will go in there for like one twenty, one tenth, go in there. But the p best part about them, they recover all of that yep. breached information back. This is this is well, that, something that I really excited because I'm in the security business. I own keystroke encryption uh, companies. Also, art. Yeah. Like like when I think about really like some of the origins of cybersecurity of the yeah. industry. I mean, art is kind of like Mount Rushmore. Oh, I, I, of, I, I was of, the spokesman of, for... Of, of the cyber I was the spokesman for RSA at the conferences over there in San Francisco. Yeah, of course. I, was probably, I was probably out Introducing there. art, and uh, wow. and that was when I was with uh, uh, RSA. And uh, I tell you, art is the godfather of no, cybersecurity. Totally. Yeah. 
And then we 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 know we know about these other cybersecurity firms like the 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 Wiz and all that. Sure, Google. Now, Wiz, I just yeah. heard the other day they rejected a twenty three billion mm-hmm. dollar offer. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, they must think they they must think that they got it. Well, because and look, Google and to your point, Google and all the you know to Wall Street Journal, all the articles twenty three billion for Wiz that they rejected. Now, if you look at Wiz, their last valuation was twelve billion. So it just shows that in big tech, remember, you have combined top 10, 12 tech companies, you have 1.2 trillion of cash, and they're companies that generate three, 400 billion altogether. So what's going to happen is the consolidation theme is going to continue. You look at Wiz, that's a special company. Mm-hmm. You know, like Wiz, I kind of view as probably one of the future leaders of cybersecurity. But that's why for them to walk away from a $23 billion deal, it shows where they think the value. You, you know, as I said, I'm involved with cybersecurity. Years ago, I bought the keystroke encryption yep. uh, patents. It's simplicity. It's down to the kernel. We use your phone, you hit the keystroke or your computer. Now, we all know that we cannot stop these hackers from these day loggers coming in. They could come in, you open up an email, you don't even know. They sit there, they watch, they look for your account numbers, they look for your security codes, and then what they do is they go onto the dark web and they sell it to yes. the criminal element. It's a very simplistic thing, but the, the, the keystroke uh, patent that I own it's so simplistic whereas it's it it goes down where they cannot see what you're keystroking it's simple and all that we're uh and uh the, you know the company I was trying to think of well, first data they used to be first data now yeah. the one that bought first data was the one Frank Bisignano was the chairman CEO of uh, in terms of all the consolidation yeah so basically data. this is a simplistic thing but it's not the secret silver bullet but it's something that uh, you know, minimizes your risk from getting all your information mm. being installed. Now, that's a funny thing that we're talking about now because, you know, people know NVIDIA. Uh, we all mm. know now yep. it's 3.3 trillion. And when I met you, it was, uh, no, no, uh, two and a half years ago it was 300 million. Yep. And you didn't have dinner with me at Rails. And you had dinner after that. I wish you had dinner with me. And look what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now what's the difference of investors out there listing with a chip company and AI? Yep. You have to, you know, let's, let's dissect sure. NVIDIA. Are they involved with AI or just chip? So to dissect it, NVIDIA view their chips as essentially the hearts and lungs of AI. AI, artificial intelligence really doesn't work without NVIDIA's chips. So their chips are really the org, and they're really the only game in town. So when you think about their chips, it's almost like the new oil, the new gold. So you can't, if me and you are gonna have an artificial use case, yeah. You could not- Do it without end, NVIDIA's you chips. You really couldn't do it without NVIDIA's chips. So the wow. reason, that that stock has obviously been meteoric is that they now there will be others amd intel down the road but nvidia that's what makes them so special now then it comes down to like okay that's the chip how do you actually then deploy the software that's where like cloud big cloud companies microsoft Mm -hmm. google amazon they're essential so when you think about ai nvidia microsoft google really are almost the start of what really creates what I'll call is like the first derivative of AI. Then it comes down to like, okay, how do companies deploy it? That's why companies like ServiceNow, Salesforce.com, mm-hmm. Workday, Palantir. Mm-hmm. So the software companies are really what I would call like the second derivative of AI. Then cybersecurity being the third. That company I was trying to think about, Frank Bezignano, is Fiserv. Yep, Fiserv. $80 billion company. But Fiserv is a good example of like, when you look at Fiserv, they're using AI and will continue. Because think about the data that a Fiserv has. Well, even Vinny Viola's company, that I, I, my dear friend, well, he was the one with the, uh, the trading, the speed yep. trading. Now, they use AI in that? AI, th- there's not going to be in the next year. You won't have a vertical in some capacity that won't be using AI. And, and ultimately, what it really creates, and we talk about like the fourth industrial revolution, it's about data. 
Because what AI is enabling companies, businesses to do is there might be things that humans could take months and months to maybe, research, maybe to research. Develop. and this could be done overnight. Well, even drug cures, let's face it. Well, of course. You pile it all in there. We don't need 16 guys looking through microscopes. All of a sudden, we can find a cure lot faster. But now those 16 individuals could be used maybe for other functions. That's why like, I'm not... See, I'm not a believer in the whole scare tactic. AI takes all the jobs away. See, actually, what I think it's actually doing, especially when you broaden it out, AI right now is being led by the U.S. Mm -hmm. versus China. For the first time, as somebody like me that's covered oh, Texas. Are we, and that's a very important thing you're hitting on. Are we that much far advanced over China? Because I've been to China, Beijing, sure. and they've, they've, they've hacked every aspect of Boeing, our aerospace industry, our defense industry. What's stopping them from hacking into our AI companies because and getting our proprietary? It's a, it's a great question, but for the first time in 30 years, U.S. is winning the tech race. Well, I'm glad. And, that's and, the greatest news I heard and, today. And, and the reason that's important is NVIDIA, U.S., Microsoft, U.S., Palantir, Google, Mag7, Big Tech, U Semis, Intel, AMD. Now, where do they get the raw materials? A lot of the chip? Of course, China, Taiwan. It's part of this tightrope where U.S. needs China, China needs U.S., We'll call it a cold tech war, essentially, that's happening. That's why, you know, as, as we look out into th this AI revolution, almost an arms race that's going mm -hmm. on, it w what's actually, and, and it speaks like Inflation Reduction Act, and you see more building of chip fabs here in the U.S. Where we could supply our own chips. Well, we don't have to go to China. Because, yeah. because, and that's the ultimate goal, that we're essentially creating another ecosystem, which also is actually going to create a lot of, high value jobs in the US. Yeah, I, I mean, it, this is really some very, the best news I heard today with all the depressing stuff is that we are that advanced. I get only worry about it because in the security field, I've known, you look at a F-35, top fighter jet, they have the exact duplicate Chinese jet. Sure. Everything is duplicated. They've st stolen everything from us. And what I fear most is not China lobbing bombs on us, shutting down our infrastructure. Uh, how about if they shut the grid down on the East Coast grid? I mean, how much can they cause without throwing one bomb? And I always am afraid of that because that type of war could be more devastating than a bomb even. But that to you to that point, and like being so involved in cybersecurity, that's why the level of spending in the Beltway on cyber is probably bigger than it's ever been before. And if you look at a lot of really the technology refreshes going on, architecture refreshes, mm. as so much data goes into the cloud, that really becomes lockbox safe. Because who is a guard by? Mm. Zscale or Palo, Checkpoint, you know, name your cybersecurity vendor. Instead of for these agencies or for companies, sometimes that may be, be antiquated software. Mm. Servers are 15 years old. To that point, easily to get hacked into. Right. That's what, look, it just, if there's one thing that anyone takes away from this conversation, it's that there is a fourth industrial revolution happening. But it's not just about NVIDIA. It's about what that has started to now, we'll call it like a Woodstock, whatever. Now it's what it started broader across really the U.S. and the global tech industry. So, Dan, I'm going to give you $100 today. Where would you put it? I mean, to me... You have to look at names like Microsoft because I think Microsoft, as well as Nvidia, are you don't think it's it's over leveraged. Look, you, I always view when it comes to stocks, it's very easy to get caught up sometimes when they have huge runs. Yeah, and then all of a sudden everyone piles in, stocks mm. sell off, and then everyone's like, oh, no, every yeah. stock I have For, invested always loses. But I, I I I believe my philosophy has always been as a tech analyst, you identify the key themes, the winners. And you make those calls. And you could, based on your risk, how you ultimately own them. But when I think about this AI trend, yeah, there's really a basket of names, Palantir being another, Google. Um, you know, but you a, keep going a, back to Google. You're really well, I think hot Google, on Google. Because Google, to me, they have the data, search, advertising, now cloud. What Google's essentially doing 
is almost recreating itself. I mean, it's a transformation that's been happening in Google. Oh. And I'd argue the same for names like Meta. Now, what was this this one? I want to ask you. I've, I've been seeing that Elon Musk has been developing something yep. in that house on the corner. What actually is that? Is there anything to that? Look, in terms of Musk, obviously there's Tesla, SpaceX, but then when it comes to like XAI, in other words, Musk is essentially creating his own AI That's what ecosystem. I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. Now, I believe Tesla will likely eventually invest into that. So what's really happening is Musk is creating... His own AI. His, his own AI ecosystem. Now, Musk used to be involved with OpenAI, which got bought, really bought by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So now what's starting to happen is it's almost a... Yeah, but he's developing some kind of a thing to change. Uh, well, it's AI, and then a lot of it is like when you look at robotics, Optimus. Robo that's what, he, that's what yeah, he's I talking mean, about. Robotics is, I mean, Musk is a huge believer in robotics. So where you put my $100? Come on. I mean, to, look, to me, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA. You still like NVIDIA at $3.3 .3 trillion market Because my, my view is we're talking about a revolution that's that's still in the first inning. So I believe... That could be a $10 trillion because, stock. Well, I, be, I believe a year from now, and we've talked about this, I think there's three, four trillion dollar market caps, Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Apple being our favorite long-term name because to me, it's all about install bases. And when you look at Apple, $2.2 2 Come on, Dan. You got to have a little secret one there. A little secret one that, that gets you like look, it gets you like look, having the meatballs look, at Rayos. Look, Come on. The one if there's one meatballs at Rayo type name, it's probably Palantir. Palantir. Palantir is the one that like, you know, Al Carp, it's start off in government. They are what I view as probably like one of the purest play. And that AI. has a really great growth potential. Great growth potential. And they really have transitioned from government to really more enterprise. And it's hard to say AI without same Palantir. Mm. So if there's one like Arreo's meatball type <laughs> one with Bo on a Thursday night, it, it would be a Palantir. Palantir. Wow, Dan. You know, you know, I'll be very honest with you. I've done 160 podcasts. This is one of the most interesting because it's touching upon the future of our world. Yeah. And, it, you know, I've had some of the greatest guests. Or Ken Langone, sure. I, I, I redid it again. And one of the great Americans interesting by anything but not as interesting as this because this is our life's changing in front of us well that and that's where if there's one that's the thing like for for consumers for enterprise it's you it will be rare that you will be untouched in some capacity by ai a year from now wow 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 you know, man, I know you're busy as heck, and I really thank you for coming in. You know, and look, and I just want to say, like, to be with someone like you who really is probably best dressed in this room, maybe in the city, it's a pleasure. Uh, to, and, and again, thank you for inviting me here. If I could screw your head on my body and my suit, I'd be one hell of a guy, but I really respect your intelligence and giving us the people who are listening Definitely. are really designed of what we're looking at, what we're facing, and and to be real about it, this is our lives, and we have to thank Dan. And Dan, do you have like a newsletter if people want to jump on? Yeah, I'm on Twitter, D Ives Tech. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of my, how many followers do you have and all that shit? I mean, I have a, a, a lot of followers. I mean, you know, uh, there, and there's many that follow me because. My reputation's always been it's more hand holding. I almost threw you out of rails when you first got there. I remember that. Remember that? You, I did. you didn't know what table you're going to. I did. That was coming from the Yankees. You were going yeah. from the Mer Mercy, and I said, Who's this guy hopping all over the place? And like, I, I think I might be. And sometimes if you see him, I might wear sunglasses inside. You, Don't hold it against me. I tell me. you what, the Godfather, me is getting your ass up to rails very soon to join another eclectic table. But I look forward to and it. I'm going to tell you something. Really, I really want to thank you. And When I met you, after we talked a little bit, you were the most exciting guest that I was going to have on that I could remember. And I mean that because right now you really gave us the roadmap to what our lives are going to be. No, in the and future. I appreciate and anyone that listened to reach out to me. And this I want to link awesome. on with you. I'll have my Jacqueline call you. I want to link on to put this podcast and link up to all your awesome. uh, all your followers Great. and uh, ourselves. And again, we 
thank uh, Dan Ives for coming well, thank here, you. straightening us out about chips and AI. I tell you what, I got some education. Who has to go to Harvard? Who has to go to the uh, MIT? I got Dan Ives here. He tells us everything. And maybe we'll have you back another time when things start popping in another direction. I, I, that'd be great. I want to thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. Have a Thanks. great, great week, and you thank you so much. Great.